Hello everybody, welcome to this video. And in front of me, I have the Raspberry Pi 400. We're gonna unbox it, set it up, and I shall review it. So stay tuned. All right, so let's get this thing open. Okay. It comes in a case like this, and this is the standard box. And here is the Raspberry Pi 400. And yes, it is, it is a personal computer in the form factor of a keyboard. And in fact, a small sized keyboard. Okay, so let me just show this. So it's basically a full size keyboard. Um, it has three lights on the top for cap, caps lock, num lock, and um, the power on the side here. We have a Kensington lock, Ethernet, USB 2.0, uh, two 3.0s, uh, USB-C power, two HDMIs, uh, SD card, and behind this black cover, let me just try to pop it off, you have the standard um, GPIOs, and in fact, it labels where pin one is, and where pin 40 is, so you know the orientation. Okay, I'm just gonna put this cover back. Okay, so you know what I'm gonna do? Um, I'm gonna get a Raspberry Pi image flashed right now on my laptop, and if you wanna skip this part, please go ahead and do so. Um, but I'll flash it right now. Okay, so to flash the Raspberry Pi, um, grab and grab a micro SD card and head over to raspberrypi.com slash software. Next, um, download it for the appropriate platform. If you have Windows, go ahead with that. Mac, Ubuntu, Raspberry Pi OS. Um, so I already have it installed, so let's just open it up. All right. So first you're gonna choose the operating system. Um, there are all sorts of operating systems, Raspberry Pi OS, um, other operating systems like Ubuntu, um, Manjaro, and a year ago or something like that, um, Ubuntu even ha released a desktop edition for Raspberry Pi. Um, but for the purpose of this video, let's just go with the default Raspberry Pi OS. I'm just gonna click that. Um, choose storage. I plugged in my SD card, so I'll Choose that and hit right and press the S and it's gonna do it. Okay, so what's the, um, it says that the SD card is finished flashing. The OS, um, you can pull out, pull out the micro SD card and at the back of your Pi, there's a slot here, so just pop it in. Wait for that little clicking sound. It's not like the Raspberry Pi 4 or 3. Um, next, connect your any peripherals. Um, you can buy the official Raspberry Pi mouse if you want. Um, connect the monitor. Of course, uh, later I'll be doing a tutorial on how to connect the Raspberry Pi or any computer for that matter through the network. Uh, now once you got your micro HDMI to HDMI, plug it, plug in the monitor. Uh, turn on the monitor, I just turned it on. And finally, before we fire it up, we gotta connect the power. That will go right here inside the USB-C port. All right, so as you can see, the green power LED is flashing and it is showing that the monitor is active and it's starting up. So once it starts up, you'll be greeted at the desktop and it'll ask you to set it up. So let's do that. So you're gonna select next, next. Um, I'm gonna enter a quick password. If you want, you can keep it the same. I think the the default password is raspberry. Um, next. Nope, I don't have any screen problems, so 
it's uh, it's filling the whole screen so I'm not gonna select anything here just gonna select next I'm gonna select uh, I'm gonna join the network gonna select next after joining and it did so do you want to update software uh yeah maybe you would but for now just for this tutorial i'm just gonna press skip software com setup complete uh so done all right so i got the raspberry pi up and running um and i got it started up i installed some software on it um yeah i installed some software and installed like screen recording software now, in fact, I'm not using a screen recording software to do this. It's because it would slow down the machine and would not allow me to give it a fair rating and review. As after all, I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to show you if this computer, if this Raspberry Pi 400 can successfully replace a desktop computer. All right, so I got it up and running. And currently I have the task manager running a terminal window. Um, two tabs of Google Chrome, and it's only taking up 465 megabytes of memory out of its four gigabyte RAM. So that shows that it's a system that does not require too many resources to run. Um, another thing that I wanna point out is that as you see, I'm, I'm moving around this window. As you're moving around, very um, pleasantly, surprisingly um, smoothly. Inside the Raspberry Pi 4, this is not the case. It gives me this jittery effect, um, sort of like your graphics drivers are not, are not installed properly when I shift around windows, um, like move them around. But that's not the case with the Raspberry Pi 400. Yeah, in fact, this, this machine has a much faster processor than the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, it's of course an ARM processor, but it has 1.8 gigahertz of processing speed compared to 1.5 of the Raspberry Pi 4. So how about to see how this thing can compare to an actual desktop computer? Let's check out its internet speed test. Um, so let me just do one live in front of you. Um, so currently I'm connected to a 5G bandwidth network um, it's not connected to the main router of the network, but rather it's connected to a, re a router that acts as a repeater. Um, I shall feature that in one of my other videos. Um, but as you see, it's getting a 70.6 megabytes download speed, 15.6 upload. Um, I get around the same upload speed, um, with my laptop that has Wi-Fi 6. This thing has Wi-Fi 5 and when connected to the same network I'm talking about, um, and it gets a 250 megabits per second up download speed, my laptop. Um, but anyway, now, if you're using this as a desktop replacement, maybe one of the things you're gonna be doing is checking out blogs online, like reading stuff online. So how about we search up um, a nice Raspberry Pi blog, or how about we just we go on Raspberry Pi's website So it's pretty responsive, it's pretty fast. Um, how about I click this? As you see, it's scrolling very uh, nicely. It's not glitching whatsoever. And how about I open up a few more tabs? Let's stress out the machine a bit more. Okay, I'm gonna open up a instance of the web store. I'm gonna go to buymylifeup.com. It's a really good Raspberry Pi blog. I really recommend them. I'm gonna uh, select this. Let's see how fast this loads up. Still pretty fast. Um, let's install something in the Chrome Web Store. Um, I like this ad blocker. Oh, it's already installed. Um, okay, it's still, it's still working pretty nicely. Uh, how about we open up, um, how about we open up an online IDE, um, and this would be replit.com. 
It's a really good online IDE. And how about we start coding in here? Um, whoops, okay. Let's just start coding. Okay, it's taking a bit of time to load. Okay, it's asking me to sign up, so I'll just quickly, um, I'll just quickly sign in. And let's start coding on here. Oh, we saw the IDE running now. It took a bit more time to load compared to my laptop, but it was still pretty quick. Um, I cannot complain about that whatsoever. I'm just being extra critical here. Okay, so while I'm gonna code a little program, I'm just gonna delete everything and I'm gonna test out the keyboard. It's pretty responsive. Um, pretty responsive keyboard and I can type pretty fast with it. I'm pretty impressed with this keyboard. I'm pretty impressed with this keyboard. Okay, um, how about I just run a quick program here. Let's see how fast it's able to run it. Um, does it bring in any glitches or anything? Nope, it runs as it would on my laptop. All right, so how about we open up a Google Doc and um, just start typing random stuff in this. So, welcome to my channel okay the keyboard's pretty responsive i can type pretty nicely with it um please subscribe okay the keyboard is pretty responsive everything's working good in this regard um another thing we would want to see is is a terminal itself um how about how about we try installing installing an app on here and see how that functions. So I'm gonna do sudo app get install. Um, let's see Firefox. And let's see how well that, oh. Alrighty, I got a game installed here and it is Extreme Tux Racer. Now this is a iconic Linux game, so we're gonna play it on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, uh, I want Tux. Yep, um, enter. I wanna practice, let's just do that for now. So I'm on Bunny Hill. Right, so I don't have any sound right now, but I must say it's working pretty good. I, I don't see any FPS issues or anything. Um, I don't know, I don't know whether this, the number at the bottom left shows the FPS, um, but I must say it's, this game is working pretty good on Linux. Um, and this thing does not even have any discrete graphics. It's a small little ARM processor. So I must say it is really good. So I must end it off with that and is this a desktop re re replacement? Well, I must say it is. This computer, this Raspberry Pi 400, is capable of um, of easily replacing a computer of even an average caliber. I think this is a great small little device that the Raspberry Pi Foundation has come up with. So thank you for watching this video. Please like it. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be soon even selling some computers and peripherals and components. So please stay tuned with that and see you next time. Thank you for watching.